In today's video, we're gonna check out how a principal component analysis (PCA) uh, can help us visualize a highly dimensional um, uh, data set um, into 2D or 3D. So, um, there's many ways of doing this dimensional reduction. PCA is one is is one of them, and it's fairly easy to understand what's happening, and it helps us out like uh, uh, get some feeling about what the data uh, look like. Um, in 2D or 3D space when it's uh, highly uh, dimensional. So uh, just a, a, a quick uh, look at the uh, the theory of it. It's not it's not too complicated. Let's say you had two uh, feature like this. So let's say this is height, height this is ages, um, and those points are data points that you have. Um, what the the PCA will do is it will find um, it will find a linear combination of the features in order to um, uh, have the, uh, the maximum amount of variance uh, retained. Um, so if you have, let's say, just uh, three uh, features, you can have up to uh, three components. Um, so uh, you cannot have four. So the, the number of components are bounded by the number of features you have. Um, so in this case, you have two features. You have height and ages, let's say. Uh, so you have two uh, components maximum. You can decide how many components you want to, to keep. Um, but that's 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 PC in a, in a nutshell. So here the component uh, we are gonna have one component that will be uh, defined as this line, which uh, is a, a, a combination of this feature and this other feature. And after that, uh, you you're trying to find every other um, um, line that will uh, keep the maximum amount of variance uh, that are orthogonal, so at the right angle with this. So here we have two feature. It's fairly easy in three dimensional. It's going to be a bit uh, um, different, but it's the same um, same principle. And then if you have X dimensional space, you cannot see it, but you will do the same thing. So this is useful because uh, you're going to be able to see um, in 2D or 3D space um, something that happens in like 20 dimension. Um, and this helps you uh, get a bit of a sense of, um, of what's happening. So let's jump into uh, the, the code base. So the code can be found on my GitHub. It's in the um, heart disease um, explorer data analysis um, uh, GitHub. So it's over here. Uh, the, the only important part is that we're using this data set that I found on Kaggle, so heart disease. Um, and uh, basically there's 14 features. So you cannot see it in 2D, um, in 2D or 3D uh, because there's 14 feature of the, in the data set. Um, so we're just going to take, take this and then um, shrink it down to two or three um, components. So here we are. Um, we're just going to look at the uh, exploratory um, uh, uh, notebook first. So load the data set. Um, it looks like this. So you have all of these uh, variables. Um, they're not that important. This is the, the target. So it's diseased or not. Um, it's it's a bit um, the the data set is not that great, but we're just going to use it as an example. Uh, so there's a, a 13 uh, feature and one uh, target feature, and there's not, not that much data. There's 303 uh, um, uh, rows. So that's basically what you have. Uh, we can describe it a bit. Um, that doesn't matter too much. Uh, and the part that is important is over here. Uh, over here, we're uh, normalizing the data. This is important to do in PCA. Um, so, uh, but before that, we get or we extract our Y from the data frame. We extract our um, axes, which are our feature from the data frame. Um, here, we normalize using a, um, a normalizer from Scikit-Learn. So this is highly simplistic. There's uh, one uh, other thing that we could have done over here with um, this variable in particular, uh, because if you take a look at it, it's a chest pain there's four values and it's not like zero is is good and four is really bad there's it's just, just different type of pain um so this should have been one of the coded for simplicity let's assume that everything um can be normalized in this way um but you, you have to do some gymnastic beforehand so it's never as simple as that um so once they are normalized uh, we can take a look at how it is um how we calculate the pca um, so uh, we use scikit-learn um, PCA uh, uh, class 
Um, and um, it's it's the usual fit transform or fit and then transform thing. Uh, so here we say how many component we want. And in this case, you have to say two and then three if you want to do a visualization. If you say four, whatever, you won't be able to um, um, to see the thing, right? So um, here we want two uh, component for 2D visualization and here we want three. Uh, so uh, you create your model and then you fit transform on the data. Um, here again, you should extract the test set if you're doing some sort of um, uh, machine learning model training or whatever. Uh, but in this case, this is for visualization purposes um, and it's a toy data set. So, so here we have our new X. And then we can take a look at the explained variant. So this is uh, useful because it tells you um, how much of the uh, of the original variants in the data you've you've kept. Um, in all data set, there is some amount of noise. Uh, so if you're doing PCA, you can uh, remove some of the uh, removing some of the noise, but you might also remove some uh, important information. So there's always a balance. In this case, if we take a look at uh, the two D. Um, 2D version of our data set, which it was uh, 14 dimensional before, uh, we retain like about 95% of the variants. And in the 3D uh, case, we remain like 99% of the variants. So it, it's pretty complete. We kind of removed the noise. And if you look at the distribution of the um, explained variants in the components, um, the first one has a very big chunk, which is always what's kind of happening. The second one has a, a, a smaller chunk, but still um, it accounts for most of it. And then everything else after that is like uh, smaller and smaller. So in this case, uh, I'm fairly confident that we have pretty much everything um, in the 3D space. So that's how you do it. And then this is what's important for you. Um, if you take a look, oh, let's run that. If you take a look at how that looks. So if you look at the 3D. Uh, you, you just got a uh, kind of an array over here, which is a three. Um, you have a two D array, so um, this is one. Uh, this is one uh, tr trio of components, and this is another one for another data points. Um, so that's that's what you have. And you see here we have positive things, we have negative things. It's kind of difficult to tell what they all mean. Um, good. So. That's that. So if we look at uh, how we visualize it, we're just using matplotlib here, and this is how it look. So um, I color coded it um, the healthy and the diseased because uh, this was the y variable. Um, so in this case, you, you you're able to gain a bit more information about um, like what uh, what the what the data look like, how how they separate, and if you the feature that you have are enough to do separation. Um, so um, it's fairly simple. I just separate the data set uh, between healthy and diseased uh, state, and then I just use the scatter plot from Matplotlib in order to color in blue the healthy things and color in red the non non healthy uh, data points. Um, so here, if you look, I'm um, scattering the data based on the first um, component and then the second component. So um, this is the first component, this is the second component. So um, yeah, I just set the component one, component two. So this is the first component and this is second component. Um, and um, uh, yeah, that, that's that's what we're doing. Um, and then we just say how much variance we keep. Um, so this is important because now we can see that there's um, kind of a separation going on. Uh, but it's it's uh, more nuanced that we we thought some of them some of the data over here um, actually have like a high similarity between the two of them. Um, so um, just looking at this, this tells me a lot. Um, yeah, if I was to have a gradient instead, uh, it seems like like this pole is the healthy pole, and then this pole over here is the disease disease pole, and then you have like a gradient of um, of uh, really healthy to getting into a diseased uh, state. And this makes sense because if you look at um, how the Y label was, was upped in, um, where is it? If you look at the, how the Y label was obtained, um, it's 58. It's over here. Yeah, this thing. Um, 
So they're saying that um, a value of zero is when the uh, uh, the angiographic uh, well one second the diameter narrowing is uh, under fifty percent, and this uh, value one is when it's above fifty percent. So if you have at forty nine, you're zero. If you're at fifty one, you're one. So it makes sense that there is some uh, some amount of of overlap between the blue state and the and the red state. Um, and by looking at the PCA um, uh, projection of the data, um, you can uh, you you, you kind of see it. Um, you kind of see this uh, this this happening in a data set. So, what does that mean? Is that if you're trying to make a, um, a classifier uh, that separate the blue from the red, um, you're gonna hit this problem. What about forty nine point nine 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 percent and fifty exactly percent? Like. Um, how different the twos are so um, yeah but by doing this you kind of you kind of see it so now if you look at uh, the 3d state it's the same thing I, like this is literally the same uh, bits of code and the only difference is here where we add um, the next uh, component um, and if we take a look it's a bit difficult because um, we should move this a bit uh, around um, but you kind of see the same thing you have like this a blob over here and then the blob down, and then it, go, it goes from um, not disease to a disease state. Um, and yeah, that's it. That's that's pretty much uh, all there is. And um, now you gather some um, some amount of knowledge about the data just by s looking at it. And it's an important thing to do uh, to be able to look at the data um, because when you have let's say a fourteen dimension, it's not that bad. But like when you have a million. Um, then things start, start to get um, a bit more blurry. Uh, so you need to be able to grasp the data and kind of understand it a bit better. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any question, you can uh, leave it in the comment section. If you want to take a look at the code, it's in uh, under my repository, uh, heart disease UCI. Um, and it's in the uh, notebooks, this, this one. So um, like always, have a great week.